Hi guys, this is Chef Lo. Um, on video, I think 12 or 13. I've <laughs> lost track, sorry. Horrible, but that's okay. Um, what I'm gonna show you today, um, fajitas. Uh, and in order to make these fajitas really good, uh, we need to caramelize our onions. So I'm gonna start with showing you how to caramelize onions. So I've cut them in half, cut off the, the growing end. There's still a root in attached. For this, you don't necessarily have to keep it on there. It does make it easier to do. Um, so what you first want to realize is on your onions, do you want them curled? Do you want them straight? Okay. So I'm going to make the one half, I'm going to show you straight. And that's where we have both ends cut off. And we just start, we cut them this way. Okay. Julienne um, is what the strip cut is usually called. Okay, that just means that it is um, thin, long pieces, just like this. Okay, remember when we're cutting, claw grip, get those fingertips back, get that thumb back. A lot of recipes will tell you, or a lot of cookbooks will tell you, you know, get your fingers back. Um, they don't give you a name of what that grip, um, in culinary school we call it the claw grip. Uh, and it's saved quite a few fingers. Okay, so we have these cut. Um, in the end for this type of meal, the onions, um, how you cut them, aren't really gonna matter because we're caramelizing them. That means we are going to cook them a lot. Um, that means they're gonna break down, they're gonna be sweeter and softer than what you're used to. Okay, so and then on this other half, what I'm gonna do is instead of cutting them this way, I'm cutting them this way. Okay, um, and all you end up with this way is usually longer and they curl a little bit more. Okay, see, okay, let me just break it apart. Um, you get much more of a curve. Uh, here's the middle of this onion. Okay, much more of a curve. And if we were to try to straighten these out, um, longer pieces too. So, um, onions, with onions, uh, sharp knife helps a lot, right? Um, people who cry a lot, usually their knife isn't sharp. Um, that's one thing. Another is your onions, the age of your onions will determine how potent they'll be with the uh, gases they release on this on uh, so how much your eyes are going to water all right so to start we are going to cut our onions so we're going to start with pan get it hot neutral oil um this is a olive oil vegetable oil blend 50 50 blend um Straight olive oil does not have this high uh, burning point, so you lose flavor by burning off temperature of it, okay? Um, I'm gonna let this oil get hot, and then I'm gonna add my onions. And uh, once you get it hot, make sure you swirl, this is what they mean by swirl, um, so that it covers the whole bottom. Okay, onions in, and it should sizzle like that. Okay, that, that's how you know it's hot enough. Okay, once it's in, we're gonna turn it down. Okay, at this point, uh, we are just caramelizing our onions. I didn't think you need to watch the whole thing. Um, we want it at about a medium heat. We wanna caramelize, we wanna stir, we want the onions to be at the bottom, but at the same time, we wanna sit up for a little while. So we don't wanna continuously stir. Um, I fast forwarded this so that you can see how long it is. I don't, <clears throat> it looks like I stir a lot, but I actually don't. Um, I stir very few times to get caramelization, which is the browning, and that's what we want. The browning is what we want, and that's what we're looking for here. So we're not going to stir these a lot. This process is going to take probably about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, once we start seeing color, we're going to turn it down to low, low heat. Okay. So I'm using chicken tenders. Chicken breast works too. We're making fajitas. Um, so um, any of the chicken will work. First thing I want to do is I'm going to make my marinade and I'm going to cut my chicken. Um, you just want to cut these into strips. Okay. 
Okay, and then you're gonna put them in your marinade. Uh, Ziploc. Okay, we made a taco seasoning in a former um, video. Um, it's, fajita seasoning is roughly the same stuff. It's really not that different. A couple herbs are different, but that's it. Um, they have oregano sometimes in taco seasoning. Fajita seasonings doesn't. So, um, to me, I just say go ahead and use it. Um, big difference uh, generally is that they add lime to fajita, which is what we've done here. I've added some lime. Um, I put in some white tequila. Uh, if you wanted to use other alcohol, white wine or beer would work. Go with a wheat beer. Um, if you don't want alcohol at all, then you would just add uh, a little bit of water. You want a good marinade to be kind of a pasty liquid. Um, generally works best. Um, marinades usually want to soak, so liquid is makes it better. Okay, and then we want to get as much air out. So zip lock. Um, fold it over. Slowly let the liquid run. That helps force the air out. Um, another way, if you want to get as much oxygen out as you want, get a bowl of water, lower this into the water all the way to the top, and it forces the air right out. Um, or if you have a vacuum sealer, you can put it in the vacuum sealer. Okay, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator um, and let it marinate. You wanna go at least an hour on that marinade. Um, I started it now, I started it, um, a little bit before this, um, before I did the onion, so that by the time the onions are done, my chicken's been marinating. Uh, that's usually how it goes. And this is, again, for fajitas. Um, as much as everybody says fajitas are quick, they are not. Um, it's been about, I don't know, 10 minutes into this. And as you can tell, they are not that colorful yet. So I'll go ahead and cut the pepper while we're waiting. Um, Cleaned, uh, sanitized my board. Usually I try to do vegetables first so I don't have to clean, um, I can wipe it off. Um, this time though the chicken needs to marinate so I cut it first, then I clean and sanitize my board. Um, if you use wooden board, cutting boards, do not run them in the dishwasher. Um, do not use harsh chemicals on them. Um, what I use, um, a little bit of dish soap in the, in the scrubber. Scrub it really good, rinse it dry it with a towel and then you rub a little vegetable oil on it. Um, my take on it, wood, wood is much easier to work with. Um, when it comes to meat, some people don't like using wood because they think it's going to get absorbed. If you clean it right away, it won't get absorbed. Um, so clean it really good every time, oil it when you're done. Um, that helps a lot. Um, that's just my opinion on, on that. Um, I like wooden cutting boards a lot. They, they work really well. Um, there are different types. There's this one. I have one that's just a big square. Um, I also have a giant cutting block behind me. Um, that was my grandfather, so I don't use it like I should. But it's also kind of awkward in this kitchen to put a big meat block in the middle. Um, so uh, we're going to cut the pepper. Um, really depends on how much you want to cook your pepper for fajitas. You like it with a little bite um, I suggest you cut them into strips uh, same size you would cut it for like a hummus dip or a veggie dip um, if you're going to cook them really well and make them really soft and mushy um, there's no point in trying to save what you can so to say um, a lot of people will tell you to cut off the tops and tail um, this is the top tail uh, that's up to you. Um, it just makes it harder to cut these later for me personally. So what I like to do, find a nice solid spot where it's not gonna roll too much on me. Um, not that I'm really worried with pepper. Um, and then I just take out the seeds and the white part. And I just cut it here. From here, I just cut it into strips. Okay, if you don't like that big of strips, you can cut it in half this way. I'm gonna then cut them into strips. Um, depending on how much pepper 
that you do or don't want. Okay, these are fajitas. Typically, um, the fajitas we are used to are just bell peppers and onions. Um, so, uh, for me, it's okay to have them a little big. Um, if you don't like this size, if you have a bell pepper that's huge, go ahead and cut them down to the, uh, go ahead and cut them this small. Okay, not that big a deal. Um, you are controlling the cooking. So if you want them to be still tender, crisp, that means you're not gonna cook them very long, okay? Uh, big thing though that you wanna try to make sure you do is however you decide to do it, be consistent. Make them all roughly the same size. Uh, big thing I tell my students in class uh, when I'm doing knife skills with them, I worry more about consistency uh, than I really do about is it the exact measurement that the book says. Is it exactly one quarter by one quarter by one quarter inch? No, don't care. Is it, are they all the same size? Do they look right? Um, and then depending on what we're putting them in determines how close to the right size they need to be. If I'm making a sauce or a soup, okay, um, I want them bite-sized and edible. I don't want them big chunks. I don't like soups that have this humongous, humongous chunks that take um, over the bite. So if I'm having, let's say, a chowder, I want to be able to eat some potato and some clam um, without having a honking huge carrot in there or a huge onion piece. Um, so something to think about. So we are uh, dices, and I'm going to put them in, not dice them, julienne. Um, I'm looking through some of these odd shapes and just kind of cutting them down into strips so they're roughly the same size. Um, you don't have to if you like them big, if you like the big chunks, that's fine too. Okay, once we're done here, uh, we're gonna put them in a bowl. So, a lot of cooking, um, you have to be patient. I know when you're in a hurry, you don't wanna be patient. Um, if we wanted to speed up our onions, we could turn it on to a higher heat. Um, we would have to add the sugar definitely and we'd have to add maybe some baking soda. Browning is caused um, by pH levels. Um, I'm not getting too sciencey here, but um, you add those in, it changes the pH balance of the onions themselves, making them brown quicker. The water, you would add water to it to keep it from burning to the bottom. Um, if you do it on high heat, you need to make sure you have a really, really heavy, heavy bottom pan for it to work. But for now, we're letting it go. Um, your instinct is going to tell you to stir your onions a lot. Don't. The whole point of caramelized onions. Okay, is that they need to caramelize, they need to brown, all right? Um, the whole time I'm doing this video, I've been going over this, I think my third time stirring these since I took them off camera. Okay, keep them on the heat. Don't think you have to stand over them and, um, and stir constantly. You can hear the sizzle in the background. Depending on what you're doing, you don't have to stir constantly. Um, this is a mistake a lot of people make is they either stir too often or not enough. Um, grilling's the same way. They think they need to flip and touch and move and same thing, patience. You need patience. Um, I did a steak video earlier. I think I flipped the steaks a total of four times. That was it. Most restaurants, that's how we do it. That's, I mean, until you get those perfect grill marks, we flip them, we let them go, we don't mess with them. Um, most things are that way when it comes to browning. Most things are that way when they're being marked correctly. Uh, so, got off a little tangent there and that's kind of what I'll do throughout some, some of these videos. Um, so we're gonna do some fresh garlic here. I'm gonna show you how to mince, uh, two different ways to mince, okay? Um, I've shown you on a couple videos, but I'm gonna show you again. Um, so one way people do it is they smash their garlic down, okay? All right. Um, I remember seeing on a cooking video, a cooking show, where she actually, I can't remember the name of the chef, um, but she actually smashes down and hits, like, really hard. I don't really understand, you just gotta push, it smashes on its own, okay? Once you get it there, use that claw grip again, cut in strips, okay? Cut in strips, go slow if you have to, all right? Try to be consistent on your size. You wanna line them up, Okay, and you're gonna, if you wanna turn your cutting board, do it again, strips, same size. Try to go for the same size, okay. All right, 
And then if you want to line them up, you can. You can go through this and do it again. You're just cutting those same size strips over and over again to get some nice minced garlic. Okay. So that's the uh, smash technique where you smash it first. Okay, the other way you can do it is you can actually take your garlic. How about this one? And you're going to start by slicing. This time though, you're going to slice much thinner to start into these nice little strips. Did everybody see that? Okay, almost like little chips. Um, you can buy almonds that look like slivered almonds. It kind of looks like that. That's what it looks like. Um, but it's garlic. Okay, and then we want to take them, try to pile them back onto each other and line them up best we can. Okay, and then we're gonna do, again, strips. Okay, and I'm using the claw grip the whole time, using my finger fingernails and fingertips to hold things in place. Okay, and then we wanna make sure we put these, again, into that same size so they're all kind of lined up the same and then when we what I'm doing with my hand right now is I'm actually just kind of holding things in place and making them move in the same direction so they don't slide everywhere that's all I'm doing okay thing to work on if you're having trouble with knives with your knife skills Okay, this rocking motion. Okay, some people tell you no, some people tell you differently. This is what I do, it's a rocking motion. Okay, my blade never actually leaves the board. And generally what we do with this hand is we push the product through. Okay, um, great thing about this is your blade will never should never leave the board okay and if it does for any reason your hand usually should be away There's another way you can do it. Notice still that my blade never leaves the board and my hand's never in a position where it can be underneath it. So we got that. Okay, brought it back. Uh, at this point, everything can be done um, from here. Um, some of you might wanna, might think about stopping here. It, it's really up to you. At this point, um, they're all soft. There's some coloring. The darker you go, the more rich the flavor is going to be, okay? Um, you really want to be careful, though, to get to the edge of perhaps burning, okay? We probably, I could probably go for another 15, 20 minutes with this if I really wanted to. Uh, if I wanted to speed it up, I could crank it on high, keep stirring it constantly, add a little water um, to the bottom of the pan. I don't want to do that. Just my own personal preference. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to let this go for another 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Want some nice, dark ink. Okay, so in about 10 minutes, a little darker. Um, I can definitely smell the caramelization um, going on. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull them. Um, all I'm going to do is take them out of the pan. I'm not going to try to scrape everything off, but I'm going to try to get a little bit off. Okay. I'm still going to use this pan, same pan. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my chicken out of the fridge. I'm going to drain off as much of this marinade as I can. Nothing crazy, not don't go crazy, but enough. Um, a good amount. 
Okay, almost. I'd say like 95% of the liquid. That's what I would drain off. Okay, into there. Put just a slight touch of oil. Again, cooking oil, olive oil, vegetable oil, whichever you use typically. Go ahead and use it. Again, I have a blend 50 50. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these in right on top. If you want to use tongs, you can use tongs for this. Okay, once I hear that still start to die down, I'm going to turn my heat back up, medium, medium high. Okay, um, try not to overcrowd the pan too much. I know it looks like I'm crowding the pan, but I'm trying to get it so that all the chicken's in there. Okay, and I'm going to let this go for about two or three minutes. Two or three minutes. Um, if we were doing, if you do beef or pork, depending on what you want to do, two minutes on each side. You just want to get a nice sear and color. It's all you're looking for. Um, with something like this, I like to use metal tongs over a plastic or um, rubber tongs. Um, I'm going to let these go. You can see the white. If you look closely, you can see the white starting to form. Keep going. We want it to sear. We want it to get a little color on there. That's what we're looking for. Um, again, patience. Let it go. Don't mess with it. You don't have to sit here and stir and stir and stir. What we're going to try to do is actually try to flip pieces. That's all we're going to try to do. Okay, this is the cooking of the chicken. That's all we're doing. Um, so we want it to get a nice color. Okay, um, we want a good sizzle the whole time. You can see this white starting to come through on the sides. Uh, if you've cooked chicken before, it's the only meat, poultry is the only meat you really have to worry about getting the temperature right on cooking. And it has a surefire way of telling you it's done. It turns white. And that means the inside too. Um, there's a reason why it's called white meat. Um, when it starts to cook the liquid out of the middle, you can see those little white um, foams. It looks like foam almost start coming out of the top. When I flip these here in a second. Right now all I'm doing is I'm making sure that any pieces that are, might be stacked on each other are getting down to the pan because they're not going to sear and they're not going to cook if they're not touching the pan. Um, they might get a little steam to them, but we don't we're not making steamed chicken Okay, well, the other thing I'm doing is I'm also kind of breaking them up All right, I'm not stirring if you notice I didn't stir it um, I just kind of poked it and prodded it and got them loosened up Okay, um, some of these pieces you can see the white is actually starting to cover the top So that's when I'm gonna start going ahead and start flipping some pieces Okay, and I'm just looking to flip Right. I am not looking to stir or just, I'm just looking to flip them over. All I want to do here. Okay, this chicken is releasing a lot of moisture. That's what, a lot of times that's what happens with chicken. That's what happens with a lot of meats. Um, and that moisture is actually helping us deglaze the bottom of our pan. Talked about a little bit in other videos, deglaze. Um, that's when you add a liquid. Helps get the brown bits off the bottom. Part sticking. Um, helps loosen those up. Those still have good flavor. Um, they may look burnt. And some of them might be. But they're little, little pieces. Okay, that little bit isn't going to change the flavor to burnt. Um, it is going to change the flavor. Of the okay, so I flipped over most of our chicken. Okay, and I'm just kind of going through again, making sure it's on the bottom, touching the pan. Okay, that's what you want. All right, and then I'm gonna let them cook. Again, this is where that patience come through. Let them cook. Okay, don't fiddle. You don't shake the pan. You don't stir. You don't keep flipping. Okay, this is all we're gonna do um, on our chicken. 
Okay, so we just want to make sure it gets nice and cooked. Two to three minutes on each side. Okay, this chicken should be thin enough to when you cook it, it cooks. Not to mention we have what's called carryover cooking. When you take it out of the pan, it's still cooking. If you just pull this pan off, put it to the side, it would still be cooking. Okay. Um, so, like, there's a good piece to show you if I can get it. This piece right here. Um, I know it's a little hard to see, isn't it? Uh, there's this little bubble coming out. That's that foam I was kind of talking about. Okay, uh, once you start seeing that, that's when you know your chicken's starting to cook in the middle because it's forcing liquid out of the middle. Okay. Um, you'll also notice that our liquid that has come out is now starting to disappear. Okay, it's evaporating because it's getting cooked off um, because the chicken isn't as releasing as much liquid on the inside, which is a good thing. That means you've seared off both sides. So therefore, the chicken is no longer just releasing its liquid, which is a good thing. That's what you want to have happen. Um, whole point of searing is to, to lock in the flavor in the middle. Okay. Switch back to my spoon. I'm just looking. Um, and after years of cooking, you kind of get the, the feel of things, especially chicken. Um, and I'm talking about the feel like I can tell right now with this spoon that most of the chicken's done. So what I'm going to do, okay, out of the skillet into the bowl with the onions. So we got that. Okay, again, a little bit of oil. This is going to be for our peppers. Peppers in. And all I'm doing is getting them so they're all somewhat touching the bottom of the pan. That's what I want. Okay. I'm not stirring. I'm not moving too much. I'm I'm letting the pan do its job. I'm letting the peppers get down to the heat source so they can cook. Gotta give it one good stir. Starting to smell the pepper just a little bit. That's a good thing. I see a little bit of color. I'm hearing a little popping. Some of the seed that was left in, that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna let spread it back out. I'm looking for color. That's all I'm really looking for at this point. All right, once color gets on, I'm gonna throw in my garlic, tomato paste, give it a quick stir, and then add my onions and my chicken back into it. Uh, the way you can tell if there's color being added to it, you will actually, it will actually, the peppers will start to stick to the pan a little easier, okay? Um, that means that they're searing and they're dripping on to the pan itself. Doing stir, okay, I'm seeing some color, That's what I want. Okay, I don't want burnt, I just want to see some color. Okay, from here, I'm gonna add my garlic. Okay, this is gonna give this a stir. 10, 15 seconds. Let it release the flavor. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of tomato paste. Okay, this is just canned store bought tomato paste. Give it a quick stir. Chicken and onions in. Okay, and then I'm gonna give it a quick splash. Not very much at all, maybe two tablespoons worth of water.
heat off. Okay, last thing we're gonna add, we turned off our heat. We added a dash of water. Now we're gonna add a dash of soy sauce. Sounds a little weird. Just a little tablespoon. Stir it in. Okay, flour tortilla. that I never got rid of. Okay, uh, for me, most restaurants, your fajitas come out sizzling. Um, they come with tortillas, um, sour cream, cheese. That's kind of it. So all we're going to do is Cheese on top. And there we have fajitas.